All right, everybody, we are talking about glass, and I'm going to give you three different methods from which you can realize your glass morphism in Figma in the browser, because that's a big point of contention. And each one has their own takeaway, um, their positives and negatives. So right here, real quickly, in case you're unaware, there's a under the effects panel, when you select a frame, you can now add glass as an option right here. And it gives you like four primary different sliders to adjust things and refraction is gonna be one of them. So edge refraction of just the edges right here, the depth right here, those two kind of play together. So now we can really see that edge refraction. Um, and then you have dispersion, which really doesn't seem to do too much in terms of adjusting the aesthetic. And then we have frost, which will, you know, kind of blur the edges quite a bit. So how would you go about integrating this into an actual project? Okay, the first, step or the first process that you can have uh, as an option is the CSS only option. And if I show you this right here, we'll see a video by Kevin Powell. He did this last month and this is how to create the trendy blurry glass effect with CSS. Link down here is a code pen. And in that code pen, we can see the example right here. Now the CSS only options that rely just solely on CSS and not stuff like JavaScript and SVG, they're not gonna give you the most accurate representation of the modern liquid glass effect because they don't have things like the edge dispersion uh, or refraction rather, it doesn't have chromatic aberration and stuff like that. So it'll, it really just heavily relies on the CSS filter blur effect. And that's okay if that's all you want. It depends on the aesthetic that you want. Now, the positive is there's, it's very performant. You know, it doesn't rely on JavaScript and SVG and all that type of stuff. Um, the second way to do it, which I'm gonna show you from scratch, is going to be through a React library meant specifically for creating the liquid glass effect. So let's say for instance, I take this whole documentation, we're gonna step into cursor in order to tell it to set up a new React project with this in mind, and then we're gonna recreate what we have in Figma. Okay, so all I did was paste all that in in the chat right here in cursor. And then I said right here specifically, I said create a React app in this directory and make the background bg.jpg, which is the same background that I have in Figma, which is from Unsplash, very famous image, which is in the current root folder. Then integrate the liquid glass effect via the library documentation above and create a button with the glass effect and make it follow the mouse. I told it to make it follow the mouse so that we can really see you know, how it interacts with the background. So if I open up the browser here, all right, and you can see it right here. Now there's a weird stuff following and having it, and that's only because I, I had it try to follow the mouse and it didn't do a perfect job. But looking at the actual effect, here's what it looks like. And you can control it with a number of properties. There's even more than four properties like in Figma. So if I go uh, back to cursor and we go to app.jsx, this is the primary um, right here, the section where you can adjust these values in order to kind of fine tune it to your liking. So displacement scale is gonna be important. Um, you know, if I made this small, like say 15 and save it, it won't be quite as a dramatic uh, effect in terms of the edge dispersion or the refraction. Uh, but if we bump that up even higher, for instance, let's say to 80, you'll see the edge, you know, quite a bit more on the sides of it. Another big one is the blur amount, which I changed uh, to 0.4. So now it's like way more blurry. This is actually gonna be better for accessibility and readability because you're blurring the contents behind it much more so. So this option right here is probably the best option for most people. Um, but the third option is gonna give you the most realistic effect, but there's a cost of it, which means importing 3JS. So if you use something like Spline Design, it makes achieving this effect way easier than rather having to deal with 3JS coding. So if I click login right here, I'm gonna show you uh, the effect. Essentially, I use this effect on notefury.com. So looking at this, you can kind of see if I uh, try to pivot around this is true kind of glass morphism, these little buttons that I created. And if you can, you, you can go to notefury.com specifically, and this actually was a contra.com hackathon winner for the spline contest. You could see how these buttons react even hovering over these, uh, which is super, super cool. And so 
what you can do if you're okay with using and importing a library like 3JS, which is kind of larger, and you're okay with it being in a canvas element, uh, then you can use this to really create and recreate the effect much more so. So if I copy this right here, and then I go back and I create a new 3D design, it's as simple as literally just pasting, and it, it, it has all the options already set up, and then you can come into the actual button background and you can really make a ton of adjustments specifically in the material section. So you can change the blur amount like to five for instance. Now there's no image behind this. So let me get our image real quickly. There we go. So now if we select back into this, we can start to play around with the actual settings like thickness. If we adjust this, it changes the thickness of the element. Uh, refraction amount. Again, just play around with these values and it'll give you some really interesting results. Uh, the Fresnel option, you can add your own materials as well. Uh, and you have a lot of fine control over how this appears ultimately. Again, you just have to be cool with it in the context of, hey, this is gonna be a canvas element for whatever we're trying to achieve or apply the glass effect onto. And B, you have to be cool with the fact that you're importing 3JS. So those would be the primary ways. The first way is gonna be through CSS only, and that will give you just kind of like the frosted glass morphism effect that we've all known for years. The second option is probably gonna be the best option. And that, in that context, I showed you a React library, although there's probably a vanilla JavaScript library too, I'll try to find and put in the, the description. And then the third option gives you the most realistic effect, but it's at the cost of perhaps performance because we're dealing with a 3D in the browser. Uh, but yeah, you're gonna get the best options that way. So as always, don't overuse this effect. I'm a UI designer, I've taught this a million times. More often than not, being simple and using things like this minimally, like in the context of notefury.com, I just have two buttons with the aesthetic. That's all you really need. You don't wanna do like anything too crazy and try to apply it on every single element as possible. So as always, make sure to subscribe because I am restarting this channel and we're going to be really focusing on AI law and full product development. Make sure to subscribe up if you wanna follow along. I'll see you soon, goodbye.